Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to your 11th responsive design tutorial and in this video I'm going to talk about responsive frameworks. <laughs> Alright then gang, so what the hell is a framework anyway? Well, a framework is just a set of code practices that are bundled together in some kind of package which can help us deal with a particular problem. And bundled in this package could be HTML files, CSS files, JavaScript, or other files for different languages depending on which one we're using, right? Now the aim of a framework is to make a particular job or a particular task much easier for us, the developer. And one type of framework is a fluid responsive framework. And the aim of that is to create a spo um, to make creating responsive websites much easier. So when we use a framework, we're going to write our code in the way that the framework wants us to so that we can take advantage of the framework's benefits. Now, a few examples of responsive frameworks currently out there are here. The first one, Skeleton, is a really lightweight framework, kind of gives it away with the name, and uh, just comes with a simple grid system and a very small number of other features such as uh, small styling effects for forms and that kind of thing. So it's good if you're first starting out in frameworks because there's not that much to learn. Um, a much more feature rich framework is Foundation and uh, you can also download that and play along with that as well. But the one I'm going to talk about today and probably the most popular one at the minute is Bootstrap and that's also very feature rich, comes with a nice grid and also loads of other features. So we'll take a closer look at that. So one of the core aims of Bootstrap is to make creating responsive websites very easy. That's what it's good at. And to do that, it comes bundled with a fluid grid system based on CSS, which handles a lot of the responsive code for us. So we take advantage of these CSS rules by just adding classes into our HTML and then it's going to make it responsive for us. We don't have to write any extra responsive CSS, which is really cool. It also comes with other UI features such as uh, drop down menus, sliders, pop ups, loads of different things like that. So we can make use of those as well. And it typically does this again via CSS or JavaScript. Now, in case you don't know what grid systems are, just quickly go over what they are. Um, basically, a grid splits a web page up into columns and we can slot our content into different columns on that web page. So say for example, um, Bootstrap by the way uses a 12 column fluid grid system and fluid just means it responds between breakpoints. I showed you that in earlier tutorials. Uh, so say for example, we had a sidebar on the left and the main content on the right. We could say, hey, the sidebar, we wanna take up four columns of room on the left. The rest of the columns, which is eight columns on the right, is going to be taken up by the main content. So we would just write that in our HTML. We'd add a class for four columns for the uh, the sidebar, and then we'd add a class for eight columns for the main content. And then Bootstrap is going to automatically uh, kind of work behind the scenes to style that up for us and make it responsive. Really cool. So sorry, my phone's going off. Um, I'll get that in a minute. So the grid system does all that for us. And it takes a lot of the development time and work out of uh, creating a responsive website. So it makes things much easier for us. So that is actually one of the benefits of responsive frameworks. Um, it can prototype quickly. It's uh, got a lot of the code already made, so we don't have to do it ourselves. And it's also good for either small or large projects, whatever you're working on. And one of the good things about Bootstrap is that we don't have to download the whole thing. We can just download the parts of it that we want. So if we just want the grid, we can just download the grid. If we want all those extra bits, like the pop-ups, etc., we can download those as well. All right, so I've gone ahead and gone to getbootstrap.com, which is where we're going to download it from. Uh, we're just going to take a quick look at Bootstrap, by the way. I'm not going to dive into it into any depth. I'm going to do a whole tutorial playlist on this in the future because that's what it's going to take. Uh, but I'm just going to give you a quick example of what it's capable and how quickly you can do it. So to download, you just click this button right here. And there's a few different options. Uh, you can download it yourself. Uh, and then put it in your folders or you can get the, the source code or this advanced SAS option or you can just use the CDN which is a content delivery network which is normally what I like to use so what I've done is copied all that and I've pasted it into our HTML index file just here like that in the head okay so I'm going to use that in a minute but if you don't want to download it all you can also go to this customized link at the top and down here you can choose exactly what you want you can uh, change the colors, 
the typography, loads of different things, and all the different uh, plugins that you might want to add into this package and all the different features and components. You can deselect or select whichever ones you want. So that's really cool. I'm not going to do that for the sake of this tutorial. I'm just going to download the whole lot because it's a lot quicker. Um, so yeah, I've already done that and it's in the HTML. But before we go into the HTML even further, I just want to show you, if you click CSS up here, this is going to show you a list of all the different CSS features that come baked into Bootstrap. And you get a list on the right here. I'm going to click on Grid System. And this just gives you an introduction to what the grid system on Bootstrap is all about. So you can see here it says it scales up to 12 columns as the device of viewport size increases. Okay, so blah, 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 blah. It tells you how to use it here. Then it gives you the media queries which it uses. And uh, an example of the grid right there. If I just inspect the element and make the viewport smaller. Oops. What I'm going to do is just click that and choose that option. Okay. Now you can see in a minute the grid is going to change like that. And now you get all the columns there 100% in width. I'm going to show you this on our website in a minute. I just wanted to show you what the grid system is like on the Bootstrap website there. Uh, so you can read all about it. Um, I'll leave the Bootstrap website link down below so you can go and check it out yourself. Anyway, let us now jump into the code. So I've copied those CDN links and I've popped them right up there in the head. And what I have done is come down here and you see where we've got these featured images. Um, if I just open this up in a browser right now and refresh, come down here, these are the featured images right here. And if we do this, we created this responsive code ourselves in the CSS. It does that, it goes to two in a row and then goes to one in a row. Okay, so that was our own code. Now, in this HTML right here, that's there. What I've done is I've copied that code, right? And essentially I've pasted it down here. I'm gonna uncomment it now. And you can see we've still got the same image, uh, a tag, span, and span again. That's those four elements right here. But instead of using li tags and this ul and the featured thing, what I have done is I've used Bootstrap's framework code practices. That's what you need to do. So I've made use of the way that we should lay out our code in our website using Bootstrap. That way, they're going to do the heavy lifting for us. So the way they like to do it is by using rows and columns. Okay. So if you look at the website, if you think of this thing right here as a row, it's going across the screen, yeah, and it's one level deep. If there were two lots of these, there would be two rows. But this at the minute is one row, and these things would be columns, right? So let's go back to the code. So what I've done, first of all, is create a div with a class of container. That's one of the things that Bootstrap likes you to do. Um, it, you put a container around your rows or just all your content, whatever you want to do. And then within the container, you add a row. That's that div right here. You can see it's got a class of row. And that's telling Bootstrap, look, I'm going to create a row of content here. And in the row, we could have one column or we could have four columns or three or two. And we could have the left column, four um, column. Sorry, you want two kind of sections, okay? And the left section could be four columns in width and the right section could be eight columns in width. That's the kind of thing we're doing here. So we're saying we want a row, right? And then right here, I've got four elements. You can see four div um, tags with a class each associated with them. And they've got the data in them, the image, the tag, etc. Okay, so this row is containing all of the columns. And these are the classes we're using for the columns. And what I'm saying here is, Okay, when the or yeah, when the viewport is above a medium size, okay, then I want each one of these divs to occupy three columns. It says call MD, which stands for medium, and then three. Okay, call MD three. So they're all occupying three columns, and three plus three plus three plus three is twelve, right? So each occupying an equal space in the row. When it gets to a small viewport size, I want them to occupy six columns each. So it's just going to be two in each row, essentially. Yeah. So you've got six columns on the left, six on the right. And then underneath, you'll have the same again, six on the left, six on the right. And each image is going to take up six columns. Yeah. So they're going to get bigger. And then finally, when we get to extra small, I'm saying call X S 12. So extra small viewports, then each image is going to take up 12 columns. So it's going to be the full width. Okay, makes sense. So what I'm going to do is just comment out the top stuff here because we don't want this and end it right there. I'll save it and we'll view this in a browser now and fingers crossed guys, 
This has worked. Okay, yeah, so it changed a little bit there. So now this is Bootstrap doing the responsive stuff, and it's going to look a little bit different because they do things differently to how I did it in the CSS. But as you watch, it gets smaller, okay, and it's shrunk there, then gets smaller again, it goes to two in a row. And then when it gets smaller, it goes to one in a row. Okay, so it's a little bit different to how I did it. And to be honest with you, uh, the way I did the CSS to make it more responsive, I prefer in this case. But for a lot of websites, uh, and for a lot of things you're going to do on websites, Bootstrap is amazing because I haven't had to do any CSS there to make it responsive. It's done all the heavy lifting for me. All I've had to do is go along with their code practices and give this a class of row and then choose how many columns I want each one of these to be. So it's going to be a lot easier for me as a developer if I don't want to spend a long time designing or padding out the CSS for responsive designs. Uh, then I can just come in here, use Bootstrap and add a few classes and voila guys, Bob's your uncle, it's done it for you. All right, so it's really easy to start prototyping different websites. Alright then guys, so that just about covers it for this tutorial. I hope you've got a better understanding as to what Frameworks and uh, Bootstrap is all about now. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave those down below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the very next tutorial.